everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today we're doing a solo playthrough of the Defense of Pro Scion 3. I got a review copy of this one. It's a main design by David Turtsey with some help for the solo mode. This is a competitive game for two to four players. There are basically two teams, each with two factions, but you can also play solo or two player co-op, which is what I'm gonna be showing off. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, you can support us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and several exclusive videos every month. You can also check out our separate streaming channel for even more content, listen to our weekly podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. But let's get into some of the basics of the gameplay of the Defense of Pro Scion 3 and then show off the playthrough. So Pro Scion 3 is played on two different boards and they are very large. This is kind of the full scale picture of one of them, which is the planet side battle. And here you've got one faction from each team. You've got the principal faction, which is trying to crush the human defenses and get to the artifact housed at the city up there. And then you've got the humans trying to defend as long as they can and specifically get these little scientist tokens to launch off of the planet into space. In the solo mode, that's how you win by evacuating six of these scientists successfully. Meanwhile, over here in the second board, you've got the space battle. Once again, two factions. The human armada over here is trying to crush through the alien defenses and basically get to the planet so that they can facilitate the evacuation of those scientists and also uh, bombard or drop marines to help the humans out on the planet. While the meld alien fleet is trying to hold them off and also support the planet invasion. And as I said, the humans win if they evacuate six scientists. They lose if their victory points track, the orange thing at the top of the board there would ever go all the way down to zero. Or if the Empress, the leader of the land invasion, ever gets into the city. Or if both of these pylon buildings are destroyed. Or if 10 rounds have gone by and they haven't won the game. So lots of ways <laughs> for you to lose in the solo and co-op mode. And by the way, Solo and Co-op have the exact same rules. You just divide up the factions. So one player controls the expedition on the planet, the other player controls the armada in space. So those are the basics, but each faction has unique rules for how it plays. So let's just jump into the first round and I'll go over details for each faction as they go. So the principle, the alien land invasion, takes the first turn each round. And in this case, because we're playing solo co-op, we're using the principal bot, which is controlled by this deck of cards. And each round, they're going to resolve two of these cards and then get a bonus action at the end of the round. In rounds after round one, the last Meldbot card, the other alien faction, will determine which two cards are used, like in this case, the two rightmost cards will be played. But for the first turn, you always use the leftmost two cards. And all these starter cards will indicate a location the aliens want to move to, and it'll tell you what to do. You're going to move there with unsuppressed alien units. We'll show what that means later on. And then if there are three plus units present, they attack. If these weren't possible, instead, the aliens would resolve the generic push action. And this icon just means that it's a starting card. You always have three of those to start the game. So here they want to get to the Eastern Settlement, which is right here. And they have a crud ton of guys on the East and West flank. And whenever they move, they bring half of their people rounded up, which in this case is five of these basic Legion units and then one of their big units. They'll send a Centurion if they have one. These are basically meat shields that can just take a ton of damage. Each of the chips underneath is one damage. Uh, the Empress is the last one they'll send generally. So these six people move in, and then the card said if they have three plus units there, they will attack. And attacking for the principal is handled with this bag. It's been seeded with black and white cubes. White cubes are a miss, blacks are a hit, and they have slightly more blacks than white to start out. And they draw a number of cubes equal to half their units rounded up. So here are three cubes. And in this case, slightly bad luck. They got two hits and one miss. But the bag changes with each attack. If every cube was a miss, then one miss is taken out of the bag and the rest go back in. If a single hit was drawn and any number of misses, then all the cubes go back in, nothing gets taken out. But if they ever get more than one hit, then one hit is taken out. So although this was a slightly bad result for us, it does make the bag a little bit weaker for the future. So they've dealt two hits here, and if I had what's called a deflector in the space, I would get to assign how those hits were allotted. But since I don't, they have a little priority list for the AI. And let's see, uh, here they're going to kill a Marine that would die. These sort of beige units are militia, they have one hit point. These green ones are Marines, they have two hit points, and then they can't choose to kill the scientists until all my defenders are gone. So in this case, they want to totally take out the Marine, and these guys are gone from the game forever. You cannot get them back. And every time a human unit is killed, you place one of these little fallen tokens there, which is nasty because the principal can create new aliens out of my bodies, out of the corpses that are left behind. Now I can take actions to clean those up, but actions are so precious I often don't. All right, that's the end of their first card. So we discard and go to the second card, which will also be on the east. They're really uh, coming in that flank strong. They're going to move to the eastern vent and attack again. So half the units would be three out of six. 
Well, there's a few more rules. If only two or one unit would be left behind, they'll move along too. And also if the Empress would be left with fewer than three defenders to keep her safe, then she moves. So in this case, all of them are going to come. And this time we have no Marines, we have two militia, we have buildings, which they love to damage. The first time it's just damage, but the second time it's blown up. I lose access to a little bonus action, and they get to put down a sky beam that'll boost the meld spaceships in orbit. Uh, but I've got a deflector here, so I get to decide how the damage is allotted. Once again, they're drawing three cubes, and oh, okay, this time they got a single hit, so no change to the bag. When there's one hit, everything just goes back in. So it's my choice. Do I want to give them another Fallen? No, I think I'll let the building get hit. That way I can attack them here, maybe? I don't know, that might be a terrible idea. That does take away my deflector, by the way. Every time there's an attack in a deflector space, it's used automatically. Well, actually, I just remembered they might attack again at the end of the turn. So yeah, I guess I'll choose to take away a Militia. Put another Fallen down, ouch. All right, then the two cards that we drew are replaced. We can see what might come. They might attack the Eastern Approach next, although nobody can get there, so they would just use the... Although nobody can get there currently, so they just use the push. To show what I mean, here's the Eastern Approach, and you have red to indicate that there is no movement across that side. They could also hit the Western Vent, or they could try to kill a hero that shares a space with them attacking twice. So it is nice that you have a bit of predictability of what's coming next. But now, as I said, the principal gets a bonus action. If they had six or more of the hit cubes out of the bag, then they would place two of them back in the bag, basically improving their hit chances, but they don't. They only have four out. Next, if we had killed a ton of their Legion units, they would spawn some more from my corpses, but that clearly isn't the case. So finally, they'll attack again in a place where they share space with human units. Uh, normally, they pick the place with the most units of theirs, but here it's tied, so you have to actually roll off. <laughs> they don't come with a die in the game, and this is pretty rare. Oh, I didn't say which one was which. Let's try that again. Okay, that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so one up here. Three cubes again. And, oh, two hits again and one miss. So that means one of these is taken out, at least. They have to kill the militia first, but then they also get to kill one scientist. That leaves two more fallen, yikes. And losing scientists besides impacting your chance to get them off the planet also lowers your morale. So uh, as more die, your victory points go down further. I'm losing one victory point out of 10. And as I said, if this goes all the way down, that's all she wrote. All right, well, that was a harsh first turn, but now we get to respond. We get both human turns in a row. First, the Armada in space, and then the Expedition on the ground. So the Armada's turns are also controlled by cards, tactics cards. But at both the start of the game and every two to three rounds, they're going to get six cards, and they're going to assign three to their combat deck and three to their actual hand of cards. For the combat deck, all I'm caring about are the number of hits, little targeting symbols at the bottom. That's how much damage will be dealt when that card is drawn when the armada attacks. Whereas I pay attention to the top for activation of units and the middle for special powers when I play the card on my turn. I play one card per armada turn. Now, predictably, the cards with the worst damage also tend to activate the fewest units and have the weakest special abilities. So it is a tough choice. This is a fairly bad draw. Usually you hope for like at least an average of two. But here with all these ones, I'm kind of low. So, you know, do I make my combat deck very strong with twos and threes, but have a fairly weak activations? Oh, let's see. I love this one that lets me activate three frigates and four interceptors. That's a lot of ships. And I hate this one. Two coordinate and one wild. What a bunch of trash. So even though this is a one hit, I'm going to put that in the combat deck, plus the big three and the two. So I do have kind of a balanced combat deck. And then I'll have these three for activations. So we just shuffle that combat deck up and we'll draw from it each time a unit attacks. All right, as for me, the main thing I'm looking at are the top things. I've got three types of ships, frigates, dreadnoughts, and interceptors. You can guess uh, kind of the level of power of each of those. And then you also get these coordinate actions that let you move scientists or get what are called echo drones that give you some uh, options with your turn. The stuff in the middle won't matter for the first turn. This becomes a power that is active while it's the top card of my discard pile. So the second round on, I'll have options. And they use this material. I think it's called Prometheum. We start with two of it and we can get more by evacuating scientists. But that's the only way generally to get it. So let's see. I feel like maybe I should just go hard and attack as strongly as I can right off the bat with three frigates and four interceptors activating. So let me explain the space board a bit more because there's kind of more going on than the human board. So first of all, you've got spaces you can move through and adjacency. Once again, the reds are blocked, but the white and the green you can move through. And the green denotes orbital zones right around the planet, whereas over here are non-orbital zones. And the main ships you're going to see for now are fangs, which are their main attack ships, and hoods, which create kind of this defensive matrix. Basically, the alien ships gain bonus health for each adjacent hood. So that's why we have these shields that kind of just like mark how much bonus they're getting in each space. 
And I've got a bunch of ships over here and some more on the right. And then I have a few ships that start in orbit in the solo scenario. And something you don't see much of yet, it's only in this space up here, but they'll be putting it down a lot during their turn, is spores. Instead of attacking my ships directly, the meld put down spores in spaces. And if they build up to a high enough number while my units are there, they get to blow up my units for free. But enough about that, for my action, I get to activate four interceptors and three frigates. They can be anywhere on the board. Interceptors can move and attack, or attack and move, or move twice, they're the fastest ships. And they have a bonus attacking hood, they can do extra hits to them. Frigates can move and attack, or they can attack twice, and they can actually attack adjacent, which is what's called a ranged attack, although they can't do two ranged attacks. So like this frigate couldn't go blam blam, but he could uh, shoot and then move in or move in and shoot. Also, something important about frigates is if they are in orbit, they can drop new marines to help me out on the planet, which is making me think I might want to move this frigate over to the right, even though it almost surely be destroyed to try to help out the eastern side of my planetary forces. All right, so here we go. I got these little activation tokens to show who I've acted with. And by the way, the hoods take three damage to destroy, although again, they're getting a bonus, and the fangs take two. Now, it's important to note that it's incredibly easy for the meld bot to rebuild hoods around the planet, like you really can't keep them destroyed, but these exterior hoods are pretty easy to keep dead. As long as you keep at least one unit in their space, they can't get rebuilt. So let's start there. We'll have one interceptor fly in and shoot at the hood. They get a plus one hit bonus. And again, it's got three hits plus two, so we need to do five damage total. And if you don't deal enough damage to kill it in one turn, then all the damage heals. So I draw from my combat deck, and I got two plus one, so that's three, which means even my one card will kill it now. So we're going to hope we get lucky and draw that one so the three stays around. Move in a second interceptor. Ah, darn it. Okay, so <laughs> we know our next card is a one damage, but we did kill this hood. You just flip it over to show it's dead because they can respawn them in the same spot. And that does immediately lower the bonus defense for adjacent spaces, so these are going down to plus two. All right, I'm not sure I'll kill any more hoods, but I do want to hit as many fangs as I can, so let's send in this guy next. And we know we're only doing one damage, and then we reshuffle the deck, and no bonus against fangs. And this guy's got two health plus two more, so we need to do three more damage. So now we're going to hope we get lucky and draw the afterburner, but we'll see. Now let's actually start activating some frigates. So let's bring in this one first, and we'll try to finish off that fang. Ah, darn, okay, he's got one life left. Okay, we'll do our second frigate move and attack again. Or actually, let's not do the frigate yet. Because so I think I want to move this interceptor out of there, since that's kind of like a death trap right there. Bring him with his friends. And he'll attack the fang. Oh my gosh, I'm getting all the worst draws. But yes, that guy is destroyed. And every time we destroy our second space unit in one turn, we get a free echo drone. I'll show you how those are used in a second. All right, now we've got two frigate activations left, so I'm going to move this frigate here. I'm going to try to shoot at one of the adjacent hoods with the ranged combat. They've still got four life. And yeah, there's the one. We knew that was coming. And I'll finally activate this frigate. I could do two close combat attacks. So if I don't kill the fang with this first draw, I could choose not to move and do that marine idea for one turn. Well, let's see how things go. <sighs> okay, so he's got two life left. And we know from the upcoming principal cards that they're not going to attack this turn. So I'll go ahead and have him attack again. And there we go. So we got the three left for next time. And one of these guys is dead. All right, so not a bad armada turn. We took out a few guys, at least. Now, I mentioned these Echo Drones. I'm going to be able to use them to have, like I said, the frigate drop some Marines. I might still do that on the west side, even though it's not getting attacked yet. But I can also use them to get rid of the spores to protect my ships. But there's none on places with my frigates or dreadnoughts. The interceptors can't remove it, so nothing doing right now. All right, let's go down to the planet. All right, so the expedition is, again, card-based. You'll always have four cards in your hand. And first, you can play one of them to activate the indicated hero and gain the indicated special ability for the turn. You have four heroes in the game. Right now, you're seeing three of them, Colonel O'Hare, Dr. Crom, and Sergeant Keeler. There's also Mac, your sort of spy and sniper. Now, you don't have to use one of these cards because it is taken out of the game forever if you do. But you have more than enough of these to get rid of one every single turn and still have cards left. So there's not really much good reason not to. All right, so what do I have? The Doctor can revive a knocked out hero. I don't have any of them yet, so that'd be kind of a waste. Uh, this one lets me copy the effect of an already exhausted card, one I already played in the past, so that's kind of useless. This one lets me collect every fallen human in the sergeant's space. Ooh, with all three of those guys dead in that one place, maybe I should move him over there and then play this next time. This one lets me move all my heroes for free and get some victory points. So I think that's definitely the key one, but I'm going to try to set up this uh, Leave No One Behind card for next time. So playing this card lets me mark Colonel O'Hare is activated. 
That means we're going to get to use his special ability this turn. But then I just really can play up to two cards just looking at these icons in the upper left. The flags mean basically I get one command to like move and attack with units. And the little power symbol, if I have at least one, I can activate one of my buildings. So in this case, we know we want to save that card for next turn and rescue a bunch of people. So I'm going to play both of these to get four command activations. And those command cards are just discarded, but this card again is removed from the game forever. I will never see it again. All right, so this says, all you're standing here is may move once. Collect up to two fallen from a location with at least one hero. Score one victory point per settlement location where you have two or more combat units present. All right, so let's see. I want to get Sergeant Keeler moving towards there so I can uh, get him into the space for next turn. I'll move Colonel O'Hare down here because he can try to attack a bit. And then I'll get to rescue that fallen for free. And then I know the Western Vent might get attacked next turn, so let's move Mac the Sniper in to help with the defense. And the doctor, should she move? Nah, I think she's safe in the city right now. And then I'd say I score a victory point for every place with this graphic on it. Uh, there's four of them, but unfortunately this is the only one that has two or more combat units. So I get one victory point, I'm back to 10. Okay, now I get to use my four commands. And I can also, during the turn, choose to use Colonel O'Hare's ability. It says select up to three combat units. So militias, marines, and heroes, not scientists. And move each once to an adjacent location. And then I get to place a deflector in O'Hare's location. That's one that lets me choose where damage is dealt. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Whoops, I just realized I moved the wrong figure. There we go. I'll get a Keeler one space further over. So I'll have to use a command to get him in there so the other card's ability will work correctly. I oh, know, I forgot. I'm going to rescue this Fallen for free from uh, the card I played. Then I get two more free combat moves. Well, let's see. This guy kind of got left behind, and usually they don't really go backwards. So I think I'm going to bring the Marine down here to help out. And then maybe I'll move the Marine that was already here down here to help fight. Sure. Well, now let's uh, move this to uh, random militia since he's not really helping with anything. Okay, so now I get my four commands. You can move a unit with one command. You can attack with one command, although each unit can only attack once. So I can't have the same militia shoot five times. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have a deflector from uh, my Colonel O'Hare ability. And finally, one command lets you both remove a fallen if you're in a space with a hero and also put a deflector down on the board. So even though I'm leaving him all by himself to get potentially murdered, I'm going to protect those scientists and move Keeler in there. And then I'm going to do one, two hits here. Two because it's going to kill two of their Legion units, which will bring them down to two draws from the bag instead of three. And then do I want to attack here now? You know, I think I'm going to bring in a Marine. <laughs> so he's not just totally getting killed. So before I assess my hits, I can spend up to two Echo Drones to have frigates adjacent to the planet drop some Marines in. I can only do this up to six times. I'm limiting the number of Marines I can drop in. But wherever they drop, they deal one damage automatically. And because that frigate's on the west side of the planet, I would have to drop the Marines on the west as well. I've got three Echo Drones. I'd like to have two in case my frigate survives to drop on the east next turn. What the I might get lucky and draw more. So I'm going to drop two Marines in here to probably die. But they get to immediately deal two damage. Now, the reason I'm not taking away units yet is because the damage goes on a you go, I go system. I get to pick who takes the first damage. The AI picks who takes the second back and forth, except for some special abilities that deal the damage directly. And that's what we're going to do now. So I'll choose to get rid of a Legion, but then they choose if a Centurion has half or more of its seven health to take damage on the Centurions, basically tanking for their other units. But over here, lucky me, the reason I only attacked for two is that the Empress they never want to hurt. They're going to let me kill two of these Legion units, although I guess I could attack the Empress. And now they're looking pretty weak over there. All right, so that's the end of the turn. I'm going to draw back up to four cards. But again, we're definitely choosing to play that leave no one behind card. Because I'm going to get an extra command for every person I rescue. So assuming nothing goes wrong and they don't mess me up with their actions somehow, I should have a crazy turn next time. Finally, to close out the round, we do the meld turn. And in some ways, the meldbot is the most complicated. In some ways, it's pretty straightforward. They only need a single card. And they also use this die. Basically, the diamonds on the leftmost die are going to determine how many units they move and attack with. And these circles are going to determine how many uses they get out of whatever special powers on the bottom half of the card. So in this case, they're going to be defending and bombarding. Ouch. And also, as I noted earlier, this is going to determine which cards are used by the principal next turn, which is the two rightmost ones. So the two options for the top half are attack and defend. Attack means they're going to try to destroy my ship specifically and focusing on non-orbital zones, not around the planet. Defend means they will only look at zones around the planet. And it's always going to be two times the number of diamonds, which is four units in this case. And all they're activating are Cobras, which get to activate three times. Luckily, that one's not adjacent, so it's not going to come into play. Instead, they're going to activate four of their fangs. Well, actually, whoops, silly me, I forgot that first they get to build something for free. 
First, they want to build a hood in an orbital zone, and I can't stop them, but I didn't destroy one. Then they would rebuild a hood in a non-orbital zone if I had left it empty, but I didn't. And then next, they're going to put down a rattle in a place that doesn't have one that's orbital. This is going to be bad for me because with the four activations, they're going to kill my frigate, as you'll see in a moment. So next, they'll activate up to four ships, again, two times the number of diamonds. And each of the fangs can move once first, and then it can place one spore in its space. So first they prioritize activating ships in what's called the most dangerous zone. And for them, the first tiebreaker of most dangerous is a lot of them, but all we care about right now is that there's a human ship here, so this is actually a pretty simple turn. So this fang right here is gonna do one spore. Then we're activating three more looking at adjacent spaces, and they try to do the ones that have the most units. So first one will come here at a second spore. Now this place has the most units. They'll come here at a third spore. And now both these places have two units, but uh, when that happens, they go from clockwise north around. So this guy will come in and put a fourth spore down, so they have four total. And how many spores are needed to take down the shields? For an interceptor, it's three. For a frigate, it's five. They only have four, so I should be safe, but rattles get to double a single spore in their space. They're kind of like an extra spore as long as at least one is there for them. So that'll be five. My frigate is destroyed. One spore goes away from the explosion whenever a ship is destroyed, but still, that was pretty terrible. I was hoping to move them over and drop some Marines in. And also, I lose one victory point whenever I lose a frigate. That was a rough meld to turn. And they are not done. Bombardment says, deal circle damage who targets outside of the pylon's location, which is three here. So they're getting to bombard us three times. Now, these pylons here protect from bombardment, and they also protect the city, so anybody in these three spaces can't be attacked. But the Meld's first preference is to bombard heroes who aren't under the protection of this place, which is all three of these heroes. Now, each person can only be hit once by bombardment. Normally, heroes get to ignore the first hit dealt to them per turn, but uh, clearly that's not going to apply here. And here's how damage works. I take a wound card. They have a limited number of these, and it goes on top of my deck. It's basically a wasted card when I play it, and it just kind of clogs up my deck unless I can use an action to get rid of it. There are some ways to do that. So I'm taking a wound for Mac, Keeler, and Sergeant O'Hare. That means my entire next draw of three cards will be wounds, unless I can do something about it, which I think I'll be able to, so it's not uh, the worst thing in the world. So ouch, Meldbot, ouch. And uh, now this die gets re-rolled and put to the back. So... We can see like how many enemy activations. This turn will be almost no enemy activations, but a ton of special powers. This turn's uh, fairly medium, and that one's going to be a crazy turn of eight enemy activations. I'm not looking forward to that. And whew, that is the end of one round. We go to round two. Note these plus sixes. That's when the Armada gets to draw six new cards, three of them getting shuffled into their damage stack, three of them going into their hand. But none of that yet. We're going back to the principal, and remember the last meld card said to activate the rightmost cards. We're going to do that left to right. So first, Eastern Approach. They want to move there and attack, but if they can't, they'll push. And they can't because, as I showed earlier, nobody can reach that space. All right, so a push means they're trying to push into the pylons to destroy them or to get into the city, because remember, if the Empress gets into the city or if they destroy both pylons, they win immediately. So here they're looking for people adjacent to the pylons, which are these two groups. And first they're looking for the one that is least suppressed. That means it has the fewest of my units in its space, because if they move out of my space, I get to deal one free damage allotted how I want per unit left. So that means they're going to move from here. And now because they are suppressed, they're going to attack and then move to try to get rid of my suppressing units. They're drawn three. Now's the time for some whites, please. Okay, only one attack, so nothing is taken out of the bag. And now I'm really glad I have these units. Unfortunately, I don't have a deflector to assign the damage because then I could assign it to Keeler. Remember, heroes ignore the first damage they take each turn. But they're going to prefer to injure the Marine, knocking him down, before they move out. But since they're moving out, I get to deal two damage to them. And yeah, I think I'm just going to kill two of these guys because, again, the Centurion is just one unit, even though it has a ton of life. That worked out pretty great. Hey, this is Mike from the future real quick. Before I get into the principal bot turn, a big thing to note about this video. In this playthrough, I kind of found an exploit where by putting Marines in the starting area, the AI breaks down a bit. And for the entire playthrough, they're never going to be able to attack from the west flank, which will make them do some terrible moves and just get totally wiped out on the east. But the cool thing is I talked to David Turtsey and John Albertson, who worked on the solo with him, and they've added a rule to the errata that will fix the situation from ever happening. So I debated whether to keep this playthrough or not. It took me three hours to film it, so I really didn't want to do another one, but I still think it's pretty entertaining and it still shows what the game rules would look like without this errata potentially. So I hope you enjoy, but keep in mind all the craziness that's about to happen on the planet would not happen with the new errata. The uh, AI would act much more intelligently. Okay, now the second card is for them to attack the Western Vent. Oh, but wait, the only people that can move to the Western Vent are suppressed by those two Marines. I kind of didn't think about that. So never mind, they're going to push, which funnily enough means the exact same units are going to push in because they're still the least suppressed out of people adjacent to a pylon or city. And they're going to try to move into the city. 
Let's first still attack the guys here, but they only get two draws now. And oh, they got two misses. That's good for us in that we don't get hurt at all, but one of these gets taken out since they drew all miss cubes. Okay, then they're gonna push into the city, but I get to do two more damage. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> so that's odd. All right, well, those guys I'm not gonna worry about for a while. I don't think they'll be doing anything. And it's nice they didn't do any damage because they would have preferred to hit the pylon first and get me closer to losing the game automatically. Ooh, actually, 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 I'm not gonna kill two of the guys because they will use the fallen tokens to spawn as their bonus action if there are 12 or fewer Legion units on the board. And there are currently 11, so if I put both those guys back, that'll make it 13. I'll just take two damage off this Centurion, thanks. And now instead of spawning and getting rid of the tokens, I'm literally about to save. They're going to, no, not get two of those because they don't have six out. Oh, so they're gonna do another attack. So they want the biggest group of principal units sharing a location. I know it's tied again, which is <laughs> clearly here. Oh my God, how many cubes is this? Yeah, bye-bye Marines. Uh, four, seven, eight, nine, surrounded up as five guys. Oof, three damage, but that means one damage is taken out, okay. So that means one Marine is killed right out and the other one is just injured. Awesome, so you're still suppressed. I'm messing up their entire west flank here. Alrighty, I'm feeling kind of good about how that turn went. And right, let's see what's coming next, okay. Uh, they'll try to attack a place with a pylon if they are there, otherwise they'll push. They'll probably just be pushing a bunch next turn. But for now, let's get back to my spaceship saddened over the loss of their frigate. And I'm glad I moved that interceptor out or it would have been blown up too. Because I've got two options left. I can do four interceptor activations and one coordinate that uh, lets me get an echo drone for later. Or I can do two interceptors and two frigates. I mean, that is definitely more attacks, right? And by the way, I do have a special action available for my discard pile. I may spend one Prometheum, I have two, and one of your coordinate actions to produce one Echo Drone per Centurion on the ground board. There are currently three Centurions. So that's pretty good. Oh, but I would need a coordinate. So we're definitely going to do this, get four Interceptor activations, and I'm going to use a coordinate action and one Prometheum to get three more Echo Drones. Hmm, although, okay. The problem with just Interceptors is that they cannot use Echo Drones to get rid of Spores. So if they charge in here to attack or charge in there to attack, they're going to get blown up. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like a terrible idea. Although if I get lucky and they draw an attack card, they'll focus on coming to the frigate. Uh, yeah, never mind. Never mind. I'm going to use two frigates and two interceptors. I just don't want to charge into that death. So I'm not going to spend the one Prometheum to get three Echo Drones, sadly. Let's see. I pretty much just want to kill the Fangs, I think. Now, sadly, my frigates can only do one range attack. So I guess I'll just move them in and attack. So each fang has four life. We'll attack the first one. Three damage. We need one more. Shuffling up. Here comes the frigate. And two. So I wasted one. And then we'll send in one, two interceptors attacking the same fang. Three and one. Yeah, okay. So that's enough. Boom. Killing two guys does get us a second echo drone. And instead of dropping marines, because the grand battle seems to be doing okay, I'm going to spend both to convert this into one spore. So we're definitely still going to lose some units, but hopefully not as many. And hey, I do have a chance of getting some scientists off, so maybe I'll try to send some up this next turn. We'll see. All right, now back to the expedition with some finagling. We got Leave No One Behind to go off the way we want, so we're definitely going to play that. So we'll activate Sergeant Keeler, and if Keeler is standing, collect every fallen in his location. That is three people. We'll gain an extra command up to a maximum of three for each fallen collected this way. Yes. And then I definitely want at least one power, because I'm going to use the hospital to get rid of all the wounds that are on top of my deck, as you'll see. And for my other card... Move up to three wound cards from your hand or discard pile. That might actually be good for next turn. So let's go to two locations without absorption fields and place an absorption field in each of them. Yeah, I know I'm about to have wounds in my discard pile, so let's... Ooh, actually, you know what? I forgot. Keeler has a special ability that his wounds always go straight to the discard pile, so he's not putting those on top of the deck. So I think I'll do that since I know I'm about to get a lot more commands instead of doing the one extra one. So I'm going to have three, four, five commands and one power for a building activation, plus Keeler is activating can use his power. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Awesome. And I get to do a building activation. My hospital lets me draw three cards. I can heal one of the wounds there and then discard as many of the other cards as I want. The railgun lets me kill a legion straight up. Satellite dish gives me an echo drone. And this ignored building adds a uh, miss to the bag. But clearly I'll use the hospital. And since I know it's just two wounds on top, I'm just going to choose to draw both of those. I will heal Max Wound because she has less overall health and put Colonel of Hairs in the discard pile. All right, now I have five activations. Plus I can activate Sergeant Keeler. I can move him to an adjacent location and deal two hits in his current location. That counts as his attack for the turn. So I'll spend one of my commands to get him over here. And then I'll use his special ability, leaving me with four commands to come in here and deal two hits. Because I'll be killing a lot of guys that way. Jeez, I could wipe out the uh, Empress, couldn't I? But first, with one of my four remaining, I want to get a scientist here to launch them. 
You can launch one for free return in the solo mode, not in competitive. And then with Echo Drones, you can launch more, but I don't have any Echo Drones. But I still got three more activations. And yeah, maybe uh, it's crazy, but Killing the Empress gets me a ton of victory points and takes away one of their victory conditions. So let's go boom, boom, boom and attack three more times here. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so I'm going to launch one scientist for free. And because I was on the West Pylon space, they can only launch from the pylons or the city. They have to go to the west side of the planet. Uh, nobody can attack them here, and they come with two Prometheum. And I can use a coordinate action next turn to move them out. And then if I get to move them out again outside of orbit, then they immediately jump away. And that's one of my six to win the game. Additionally, if they get into a space with my ships, I get to collect that two Prometheum. So hopefully this fleet survives. All right, now let's do the five damage for mine. I'm going to hit the Empress. Uh, then for theirs, they're going to get rid of a Legion. For mine, I'm going to hit the Empress. <laughs> for theirs, they're going to get rid of a Legion. And for mine, I'm going to hit the Empress. Wow, she has three life left and almost no defenders. This is not how the game usually goes for me. Yeah, well, I'll get six victory points for killing her. That is great. All right, let's see. I got a surprise attack by Keeler, satellite interference by Mac, another Mac, and ooh, all <laughs> two uh, flag cards, okay. But let's go to the mail to finish things out. They're only gonna activate four units this turn, but eight next turn, good Lord. Oh, and they are attacking. Okay, so they're going to try to attack non-orbital units first. It's actually kind of good for me because they're not going to focus on the uh, ships that are in the center. So the most dangerous non-orbital zone is right here, and they want to try to deal at least four damage there before they start focusing elsewhere. So let's see, that'll be one, two, and then that's all the adjacent ones. They start looking for two away, which would be that guy and that guy. So he'll move here, and I guess just drop a spore randomly there. And I think he'll move here and drop a spore there. Really, that was kind of a beautiful turn. Uh, <laughs> they only did two damage there. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I forgot to spawn another unit. But actually, that's pretty easy. They just get a rattle in the most dangerous orbital zone. It doesn't have one, which isn't going to hurt me at all. So yeah, the only damage they do, because the rattle is doubling one of these, it does get them to three. So they do kill one of my interceptors here. Wow, that is literally it? Are you kidding me? I cannot believe that. I almost not forgot to get three circles. Player loses one victory point for each circle. Ooh, that is minus three victory points. I guess I do want to kill that Empress. One, two, three. That's going to take us into round three. The Armada does get six new cards, but we'll do that on their turn. For now, let's do the principal left and right. She's going to be hunting a hero. Interesting. And then trying to kill a pylon. All right, so hunt. If five or more principal units share a location with a hero, attack there twice. I don't think that's the case. Yeah, the most units hanging out with a hero is four here, so not enough to attack there. Okay, so it said they're going to push, and yeesh. <laughs> this, is, this is so weird. So yeah, it's supposed to be least suppressed, but there's four people suppressing this group. And the sad little Empress is in contention, but there's four people suppressing her. And then the larger group is preferred, so it's not going to be you, Empress. You're lucky. So it's going to be these guys. So they're going to attack first to try to remove suppression and then move into one of the pylon spaces. I'm only drawn two, and it's one hit, one miss, and nothing taken out. And I don't have a deflector here, so they choose how the damage goes. They're going to kill a militia since the one hit wouldn't hurt the hero. That does leave a fallen here for them to spawn. Now here's the weird thing. I think they have to move as much as that's a terrible choice for them because a push means that they sweep, which involves movement. So they're going to randomly go into one of the pylons. I guess we need a D6 again. Oh, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, they're going back to the right. Jeez, the east is popular. But yeah, they're going to take three hits when they do that. Um, um, I guess I want to... Well, now they're definitely going to spawn guys anyway, so I might as well kill two of these guys, and then I will go and do one damage to the Centurion. And uh, yeah, you didn't really accomplish much. Good job, guys. Oh, and then look, if three plus principal units share a location with a pylon attack there twice, I guess it's good that I got them down to two units. Otherwise, they push again. Oh, and interesting. Now the groups are tied. Okay, now it's still going to be them because they're the least suppressed group because they would clearly take a crap ton of damage if they tried to move. All right, so they're going to attack with one cube and then go back into the city. And they got one hit, which is actually kind of good because if they would gotten a single miss cube, it would have been taken out. So they will hurt the pylon instead of one of my units. Then they run away, and I get to do two damage. Again, I'm not going to care about that extra legion because they're drawing one cube anyway, so let's almost kill a centurion, which will get us some victory points. Oh, wait, they have one life left, and they themselves are alive, so basically two more hits, and that guy's dead. All right, they have another target pylon. We got target. Oh, there we go. They would finally get their western units involved and then reorganize. If there are at least two fallen on the board, spawn up to three of them, and you lose victory points and place legions for each, although they're about to spawn right now. Oh, wait, no, they are not. Yeah, because they have six or more cubes out of the bag. So they're going to put two back in to make them hit more often. Wow, that gives me an extra turn to get rid of at least that Fallen. So they're only spawning over here. That's crazy. All right, now we go to the Armada. I've got my one card left over, but now I'm going to draw six more. Three are going to get shuffled into uh, not the discard pile, but just the deck. Although I did just shuffle the deck. So I guess they'll just all go in there. So three more combat cards, three more activation cards. Once again, pretty bad draw. Really bad draw. Wow. 
Let's see. This one activates a ton of interceptors. I don't mind that. This one, wow, is wild. <sighs> so good. But three hits is definitely nice. Let's put that in combat. Four coordinates. <sighs> well, no, I'm laughing at that, but I don't have any echo drones and I do need to move scientists. Oh, but never mind. I can move scientists with any action. So, <sighs> yeah, let's put that in the combat deck. Maybe one of these two. Ooh, that would probably get my dreadnoughts involved. That seems good. Although, man, three frigates and four interceptors would do a ton of damage. But my frigates are kind of out of position. Let's see, I'm going to do that one. Okay, so I've got a lot of dreadnought activation. You can see how that works. And some interceptors. Cool. We shuffle all these combat cards up. All right, so we're going to keep on hammering here, I think. I just want to attack a ton. And then I need to move that guy out. If you leave a scientist on the planet at the end of the Armada turn, they die automatically. Maybe I'll do the Dreadnought and four Interceptors. That would pretty much be my max of attacking. Yeah, I kind of like that one. All right, so I'll do the Dreadnought first. The Dreadnought can either do a close combat attack with plus two damage, a ranged combat attack with plus one, or they can move. Whatever they do after they activate, I can move up to two other units, but they can't do anything else that turn. And I can't move by Dreadnoughts or Scientists. So I'm going to move them in here, I think. Oh, and when they move, they get to spawn an Interceptor for free out of six that were in the supply at the beginning of the game. Otherwise, killed units can't come back. And this guy can still activate. So for my two movement, I'm going to move another Interceptor in. So this guy can't activate. There, I can go ahead and mark them. And then for my second activation, even though it's going to get me killed, I think I'm going to move a random Interceptor in here just to get the enemy to hopefully like put some attention over there. We'll see if it actually works. I don't know. You know, I get four Interceptor activations, but I'm going to use one of them to instead move the Scientist. And now we've got three activations, which unfortunately is probably not going to be enough to kill two things, right? Unless I rush in and attack the Hood. Yeah, I just want to get the Echo Drone for killing two things. I care more about that. So I'm going to run in here. I guess I could use the Interceptor. It's already there, but whatever. All right, come on. Give me a three. That would be an instant kill, right? Or a one. Okay, <laughs> so he's got two life left with a plus one bonus. Okay, then I'll have the second Interceptor here. Attack. Okay, and that's plus one again, so that is going to be four damage. So that's enough. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Crud. They have three life plus two. Wow. Well, at least I got both of my plus ones out. <laughs> okay, third interceptor, last one. Come in here. Uh, of course, now I get that. Okay, so this guy's going to get rebuilt in two seconds, but it means that they're not building another. I don't know. That was kind of a waste overall. Wow. Okay. Darn it, if that had been a two, it's the second card. And then I drew the three with this guy only getting plus one with that hood destroyed. I could have killed a fang. I would have gotten an echo drone. Everything would have been beautiful, but it's not to be. And by the way, I don't collect this Prometheum unless this guy's still sharing a space with a frigate or dreadnought at the beginning of my next turn. So that's not happening for now. By the way, I forgot the action I could have used this turn. Spend up to three Prometheum to get an Echo Drone for each. If you spend three, gain two victory points. What do I have next turn? If the Lunar Refinery is still intact, it is not. In Solo, it's automatically destroyed. So I think I will... I need Echo Drones. I can just launch a ton of scientists and win the game faster. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. So it gives me two Echo Drones, and I'm definitely going to be uh, kicking some scientists up into orbit with them in a second. All right, now it's the expedition turn. What do I want to do? If I activate Keeler, I'll certainly kill the Empress, but I'm not in a hurry to do that. If she even tries to move, she's dead. <laughs> so, yeah. Ooh, this one lets me discard one Neuron Dive, my choice from the Meld Pool. That's important because next turn they're going to activate eight attacking units. Um, but discarding a die instead of doing that in solo and co-op, you can move a die to a different face. So I could give them very few activations, although I don't know what the circles will bring. And that would protect my scientist transports if I launch a bunch. Oh, geez. Draw one card and play an additional card in the momentum phase. That's ridiculous. Or gain one additional flag and one echo drone. Ooh, that's really good too. But I have enough echo drones to launch the max number of scientists this turn. So yeah, I'm going to go for satellite interference. So max getting activated. I mean, like if I draw one card, I can play an additional one in the momentum phase. And I'm just going to go for max command, baby. So six command and I can discard one die of my choice. And yeah, even though it might hurt in ways I'm not aware of yet, we're going to do almost no activations for the enemy for quite a while. And I can use max power during this turn. I can move her to an adjacent location, assign two damage to a unit of her choice, and then the principal can discard cards, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> in solo co-op, she just does one damage to a unit of her choice adjacent to her. So let's go and activate that now and have her kill one of those legions next to us. Now I've got six command. I'm going to launch three scientists this turn because I am a crazy man. So uh, <laughs> let's do one, two, three. So I've got three more command. Um, for four, I'm actually going to get rid of a Fallen because they are going to spawn very soon, and I think that's a smart move. It also lets me put down a Deflector, and they're going to think maybe try to come here, so I can put one there. It leaves me with two activations left. Yeah, I mean, I could kill things, right? Well, yeah, I'll go ahead and kill one of these guys. Or sorry, I should put the damage there. And for the last one, clearly these guys are going to be coming, so yeah, I'll just kill one Legion because, again, I get to assign the first damage with the Marine who's still alive. Good job, buddy. 
And then one free launch and up to two bonus launches. This is why I need those fleets to not do much for the next few turns because I'm going to be spending a lot of activation just to get those scientists out of there. Now, when you use an Echo Drone to launch a scientist, you get a free move with one ship. So even though I'm leaving my interceptors high and dry, let's get my Dreadnought in here. And sure, let's get another interceptor in here too. I just want to keep people alive because again, I don't care who's here. When my ships move from orbital to non-orbital, they just jump away immediately, whether there's enemies there or not. All right, so feeling great about this. If I can get those three out, I only need to save two more. And it's funny, I was literally expecting this playthrough to be like <laughs> the shortest one ever because I would die immediately. But uh, no, somehow I'm doing better than I've ever done before. Mainly because the Altama is being a little bit dumb. And finally, here comes the Meld bots. They're going to do a ton of special activations. Okay, defend. Okay, so they are going to attack the orbital zones with two times. So two guys are going to attack. So um, it's going to be this one. And then one of these guys, that's going to bring it up to three. Oof, which is going to kill with the rattles help two of my interceptors, but that'll take away two of them. So I'll be left with one spore there again because of that rattle doubling things. Oh, and sorry, this guy comes back to life. <laughs> That's why I never even changed the shields because that I knew was going to be their spawn. And then, ooh, player loses one victory point for each circle, which is four. That's kind of the best result because they're not doing anything else but the worst result because I'm about to lose. But if I can kill the Empress, yeah, maybe I'll just focus on killing the Empress next turn and then uh, it's not gonna be a problem at all. What is the meld doing? Left and right. I'm sorry, I didn't show this last time, but I got to re-roll and <laughs> okay, even more, not many activations. Okay, so Western Settlement and then reorganize. Okay, Western Settlement, move there with unsuppressed only. Why do they say that? That seems so silly because my one Marine is going to stop them from moving again. So instead, they'll just push, which means it's only going to be the people next to pylons. So these guys are going because they're less suppressed than the Empress. Should have moved out somebody just to get the Empress dead. They're going to attack with one. It is a hit, so nothing happens. They will kill Marine, leave a Fallen, which means they are going to spawn there in a second. Okay, but then they're moving out. And yeah, I'm going to do two hits to the Centurion and kill him. That gets me one victory point. So uh, not quite enough to be safe. But again, if I kill the Empress, I should be fine. Oh, and good Lord. <laughs> Literally just about lost the game. Look, if there are at least two fallen on the board, spawn up to three of them. There are two fallen exactly. And then place two legions for each uh, one spawn. And then the player loses one victory point. Wow. So... <laughs> um, I needed that one victory point from killing the Centurion or I would have lost right here. As silly as things are going, I still almost lost. That means plop, plop. Getting even more kind of useless guys over here. And interestingly, a random unit of two guys there. And now for their bonus action, they don't have six black cubes this time. They don't have any fallen to spawn with, so they're going to attack. Oh, and here we go. They're finally going to get rid of this guy that's been blocking them. Uh, what do they have? Four, eight, nine. Wow. That is five cubes. And oh, that was <laughs> kind of the best result. All right. So they're going to lose one of those black cubes. But yeah, no more blocker for me, unless I move another guy in there, right? Ha ha ha, maybe I will. Although honestly, I feel like time's on my side, so I can probably ignore them and just let them kind of come in. Alrighty, and let's see, now they have target buildings, um, which I don't think any of them are about to be exploded yet, they haven't even been hurt. Or heal, ooh, let's kill the Empress before that gets to fire off. All right, now we're going to the Armada. Oh, and we are going to have Prometheum, but the ability here requires the Lunar Refinery, so that's not going to matter, but I do get two Prometheum from the one scientist we're hanging out with. Okay, let's see. I need a ton of activations. So I think, yeah, six interceptors <laughs> seems like the way to go. So I can use three of those for scientists. And why three? Because in solo and co-op, you can use a single activation to move any number of scientists from orbital to suborbital and save them or non-orbital, I mean. So uh, I'm just going to do three activations here. And then next turn for a single activation, I can save every one of these guys. So boop, boop, boop. That means I got three interceptor activations left. I'm just going to move this guy in. And attack, attack, attack. And yeah, we don't care about the hood, do we? They try to kill these fangs. So they each have four alive. First interceptor does three. Second interceptor does two. That's one guy dead. Oh, wait, that's real. There's no way for me to actually uh, do any damage <laughs> with the last guy. So you know what? What the hell? Let's move this interceptor in just to distract them. And we'll call things even. So I did not kill one extra thing. I don't have any echo drones. That's a bummer. Wait, is that really right? Is there any way for me to get another echo drone? So if I can get one echo drone, I can launch two scientists. Can I rewind my turn a bit? <laughs> Let's see, four interceptors and one coordinate. So if I use one coordinate to get the echo drone, and then three to move scientists, I would have killed nothing? <sighs> yeah, you know what? I'd rather do that. I'd rather do that. All right, so I'm going to switch my card entirely. <laughs> and I guess I'll put back those combat cards and shuffle them that I drew. So the only interceptor I'll move, I had one here. I'll still bring that one in, I guess, to distract them, I think. But I do get that single echo drone, so now I can launch two scientists and win very soon. Right, but I got to kill the Empress. Let's see, I think I'll do the Sniper again. So that'll get me her activated. 
I mean, that can place an absorption field in location with at least one militia. That actually cancels one damage entirely. And I score some victory points. That seems good. We have at least one combat unit present. Oh, man. I got a combat unit in three out of four of them. So that'll be three victory points. That's amazing. And then I'll go ahead and get four activations, because why wouldn't I? And let's see uh, if the target building card gets drawn. They're going to try to sweep into here. So I'll put the absorption field there to stop some damage. And like I said, I get three victory points. I got four activations. I think I need them all, right? Yeah. So one, two, three, four. Bye bye, Empress. Hello, five victory points. So back almost to 10, feeling very safe with that. Oh, wait a second. Then I don't move any scientists. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'll just have to survive one more turn. I'm sure I can, I think. Because <laughs> I definitely needed those victory points, I think, or I could have lost immediately if I got like another one of those civilian cards. Okay, and I'll use uh, her sniper ability to blow up another one of these guys so they're only attacking for four. All right, I think I've gone through my deck now. One, two, three. Oh, never mind. Okay, I got some nice cards. Awesome. All right, Meldbots still not activating very many people. I'm going to attack and then, ooh, spread spores. That's not necessarily the best, although it's not too bad. All right, so the fact that we drew attack is awesome. But before we do that, before I forget again, we are going to put a rattle there. But yeah, attack means they're focusing on the non-orbital zones first. And uh, in this case, the most dangerous is the one with the least spores because there are human ships here and here, and this one has no spores. So they attack here first, and they always want to activate their Cobra first. We haven't seen this guy yet, but he can move and attack three times, and he attacks adjacent. So bloop, 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 that guy is dead. They're ignoring him for the rest of the time, which means the second ship they'll activate is right here, putting down one here. So that's a boom, and they'll go down to two there, and a boom, they go down to two here. So those interceptors did their exact job. <laughs> Nicely done, guys, because they didn't uh, worry about these people. But this part is not so nice. After they attack, so they will not do damage yet with these, they're going to select four zones, the most dangerous ones, and place two spores in each. So they can't affect my starting spots. But besides that, they're looking for places with ships in them. So that'll be one. This will be two. But again, this happens after damage is dealt. So they're not going to blow up anybody yet. And the next they want non-empty spaces with fewer spores already there. So that'll be there. And the tiebreaker is the least hoods affecting the space, the lowest shield value. So they're going to put some over there. That was actually a great card. I mean, that and the victory point. I'm getting crazy lucky here. They could be like spawning a billion more units. There are cards that do that. And two right cards. Oh, so they're not going to attack the buildings. Dang, I thought that uh, flank might actually come into play. We reroll this, although I think the game will be over before that. All right, so the two right mode. So we're going to target the pylon and then heal. Okay, three plus principal units share location with the pylon. No, <laughs> otherwise they'll push. So it's going to be these guys they are pushing. Uh, okay, they're attacking for one. Oh, and they missed. So that is removed. There we go. They accomplished something. But then they're both killed when they try to leave. <laughs> and the second card is, oh. Remove two discord cubes and add two focus cubes to the bag. That's actually pretty nasty. They're taking out two misses and adding two more hits. Okay, if the Empress has two or more health missing, return three health to her. Okay, but she's dead. Otherwise, return one health to each centurion. Darn it. Only one of them has been hurt. That's the nice part. But look at this. If less than three health was returned, draw another meld card to execute. So they're like, never mind. We're going to attack. Okay, five plus in principal units share location with the hero. Nope. Otherwise, they push. They push. Stop pushing. Okay, they're doing one damage. Good job. Uh, which means they'll kill the militias since they don't have a thing there. Oh, no, no, actually, they'll hurt the pylon. Good job, guys. You almost blew that one up, and then uh, they'll run away and die. And by the way, they will spawn two new guys here from that fallen token as their bonus option. And uh, yeah, all right, we're in round five, by the way. Uh, I guess I'll activate to save all these guys. Oh my gosh, I get all this Prometheum? Jeez. I just want to blow up all the units I can, I guess. So this was my option. Once, you may spend two Prometheum to add a discord cube to the principal bag for each frigate in orbit. That's nice. I got two of them, so I'll definitely do that. There you go, take your two white cubes back. But for my actual activation, all right, I'm about to get more cards. I can do six interceptors, uh, which I don't really need, or two dreadnoughts and two interceptors. Yeah, I guess I'll do that one. Ooh, and then on the next turn, if I don't activate a dreadnought, I can charge the ion cannon. That's like a super weapon. Uh, yeah, so we'll do this. That's two dreadnoughts, two interceptors. And I think this guy's job as a distractor is spent, so let's have him come in and attack for one of the interceptors. And I guess I want to kill the fang, although I'm going to invite that uh, cobra to come over if I do, but that's okay. Okay, two damage to the fang, so it's got two left. For my second interceptor activation, I'm going to bloop, teleport four people out of here, so that's four out of six I need to win. And then for this dreadnought, I guess I'll have him shoot. And if he shoots at close range, he has plus two damage. Oh, so I'm just gonna totally wipe this guy out. Oh well. Uh, yep, <laughs> so that's four, so actually he would have killed him by himself. And for the second dreadnought activation, I'm gonna move him. Oh, that's right, after a dreadnought activation, I get to move two guys for free, so let's go those guys in. Then I move this dreadnought in, I'll get to move them for free, and he gets to spawn another interceptor. So, wow, I got a lot of guys, don't I? That should definitely be a nice distraction if I get another attack card. Don't, now I only kill one thing, so no echo drones, but that's fine, I've got the one I need for the expedition turn. 
I mean, we got the doctor involved. Let's do her. So return one token up to both pylons. So I'll heal that one pylon. Armada may take one card from the discard pile into their hand. That's cool. And score one victory point per eastern location where you have at least one combat token present. I have one of those. So boom, up to 10. What now? Heal my pylon. And I'll take this card back because it has seven activations. Yeah. All right, speaking of activations, I'm going to get four activations and a building. And then, by the way, Krom, I can move her to an adjacent location, place an absorption field in her location or an adjacent one, add one discord cube to the principal bag. Nice. I guess she'll come in here. And I don't know, put another one there, I guess. I got four activations and one building. I'll use the railgun to just kill one of these guys. I'll use two activations to get my last two scientists there. Blah. And then just to be annoying, <laughs> see if I can break the AI more, I'll move in here and shoot one of these guys for my last two activations. Ha ha ha. Okay, now I draw my last card and then this deck is flipped. That's right, no shuffling unless an effect indicates otherwise, but I did not get to my one wound that's hanging out in there. Was it two wounds? Yeah, it's two wounds that are hanging out. Oh, and I cannot forget my free launch and then my one drone. Get the last two scientists airborne. And I can move one ship. Uh, I don't know, let's... Get a frigate in here just to be annoying and weird. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's good or not. Actually, what the heck? Let's get the dreadnought in there. Hello. All right, and they're still only activating two for attacking. And then, ooh, here they go. They're constructing when they get a free construction. I can't forget that. Free construction in this case is going to be a rattle in the last place they don't have one. And now they'll actually start being useful and doing some fangs. But first, they're attacking with three units. So the Cobra is going to go one, two, three, because again, they prefer non orbital zones. And then the one guy that's already here will do one. Okay, now, geez, uh, six. They can kill one frigate. That'll lose me a victory point. They can kill another frigate because we're still at five. It's five to kill a frigate. Now they're down to four. And they can kill two of these guys. We're down to, uh, yeah, actually, hold on. They can only kill four guys per turn. It says destroy frigates before interceptors, but they don't say like where they have to be. So, I mean, I prefer them to not kill here. All right, so we pretty much wiped out the fleet over there, but they did their job. All right, let's see. Now they're going to construct four times. Oh, whoops. <laughs> they actually can rebuild this because I didn't leave anybody there. So that's one. And they're going to build three fangs. And they put them adjacent to the most dangerous zone. So wait, actually, is that the most dangerous zone? Yeah, actually, this counts as the most dangerous zone because it has a human ship. They don't care how many and fewer spores. So they're all going to spawn there clockwise to it. But that's not how clockwise works. Dummy, they're going to be over here. Now we reroll. Okay, two activations and two leftmost cards. All right, going into round six, it should be the second to last turn, because I'm definitely going to get those two scientists off unless something really intense happens. Okay, so they're going to target buildings. Hey, they're finally moving! And then they're going to reorganize. I think they're moving. Select a building and sweep there. Yay! So darn, I should have put the other field here, because they are going there. So uh, they're bringing in half their units. That's four people. Oh, wait, no, 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 it's a sweep, which means they're going to attack this guy before they leave. Oh, which means I think they get four cubed, because it's the number of units present, not the ones actually moving. And that will be enough to kill one, although they lose a black cube. Good job, Marine. You did your job. Okay, then they move in there, but they don't actually hurt anybody. Okay, now they reorganize. They're not too far on the board. Okay, they remove two Discord cubes and add two Focus cubes, but they don't actually attack. Wow. I will say this bag is almost entirely hits now, so that's certainly not great. But I'm kind of happy they're falling because otherwise they'd attack again. That's going to spawn two more guys here. All righty. Okay, Armada, let's play our best remaining card. So three frigates, four interceptors. I'll use two of the interceptor ones to move this here. Actually, let's use one friggin' one interceptor. That way I can just activate everybody here and go blasting. Oh, wait, wait, I'm supposed to have six more cards. I'm not even going to pay too much attention. I just want the highest damage. Okay, <laughs> two fours and a two. Yeah, please uh, go into my deck. Okay, so let's have one interceptor go first and attack that hood. With plus three, he's got six life. So that's five of it. Okay, second, I'll activate one of the frigates. So for his first attack, he'll attack there. And three, it's more than he needs. So that guy's destroyed for the moment. That lowers this to only plus one. The frigate's now going to start attacking over there at one of the fangs. They only have three life now, Ooh, which means a straight up hit. That's an extra echo drone for us. Okay, so that leaves one frigate and two interceptors. So second frigate will shoot over here at another fang. Gets two damage, so the fang needs two more to die. Oh no, only one more because it's only plus one now. Let's put that there temporarily. Next, we're going to move them up here just to mess with the AI more and have them split their attention. Two other interceptors. First one's going to go in here and try to finish off that guy. He's only got one life left, two, that's enough. And the last one with the hate is we'll try to come in here and blow up the hood, I guess. It's only a four, right? And he gets plus one. Oop, that's enough. Ooh, so that's a second echo drone, wow. I'm certainly gonna make the AI go all over God's creation, as long as they don't get, I mean, they need a ton here. Uh, they need, I think, eight or nine to kill that guy. But you know what it means? I probably should spend some echo drones to lower that. 
By the way, just so you can see how it works, I'm going to spend three because none of my dreadnoughts activated to charge the ion cannon. Oh, dang, you know what I forgot all about? I can do ground strikes with Prometheum, but I need to have a hero in the space where the dreadnought is attacking. So if I'd got a hero adjacent, I could have done some awesome stuff. <laughs> but as it is, I have two Echo Drones I don't need. Oh, so I can land some Marines. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see, even though there's more guys here, I'm like 99% sure they're going to do a push action because they always do. So let's drop in here and deal two hits. Oh, and I'm sorry, I don't do this until the expedition's turn, so hold off for now. So speaking of the expedition, I mean, pfft, let's see, I think I'm going to activate the doctor again, do some battlefield surgery. I can remove up to two wounds from my hand or discard pile and have any, or place two militia on the board, only where I have heroes, though. And then I'll do, I guess, these to get three command and one building. Let's see, she'll go here, she'll place the thing that stops damage there. No, I can place two militia where there's a hero, so she would have been there before she moved, so there we go. All right, now it's three activations and a building. I'll do the railgun to kill one of these guys, and for the activations, I'll do two damage here, and then I'll use my echo drones, and, uh, you know, now actually I'm going to go in here, I think. Well, nah, let's go in here. <laughs> Which, with that being the case, let's put these guys here, and then we just hope they don't go that way. So that's four damage, they'll take two on the centurion for their choices, and I'll remove two of these guys for mine. All right, and we should never have to do these guys again because the Armada will jump the last two scientists in a second. So this is the Melbot's last chance to make something happen. They are defending and then putting more spores down. The spores won't matter because they won't have a chance to blow them up, so all they can do is defend with two ships. All right, so the most dangerous spot is with humans and the fewest spores and then the least meld. Oh, sorry, they rebuild. Oh, which one did they rebuild? Because this one's more dangerous because it has fewer spores. I mean, this place is still plus one. This place is plus two. I don't know. We're not going to attack again, so it doesn't really matter. All right, so the most dangerous would be here, I believe, first. So the Cobra activates, but he keeps on placing it on the least spot. So I think he, like, moves to there. He just keeps on wanting to, like, reevaluate which is most dangerous. Okay, for the second activation, it'll be here, and they'll just put a second one down. And then do they kill anything? Oh, here, they can kill an Interceptor. Yes, that's it. Oh, wait, and here they can kill an Interceptor because of the Rattles bonus. They spread spores in a bunch of places, but we don't care because that's uh, clearly going to be it for them. These guys do get a final turn at the beginning of round seven. And they're targeting scientists and then targeting populated. Okay, if I already had a location, there are no scientists on the entire west side of the board. So clearly, I mean, they can't select a location with one plus scientists and sweep there. Uh Huh. Well, I'm going to make a judgment call and say that they go toward the place with the most scientists. Because again, the rules don't really cover this and I don't think they would want them to do nothing. So yeah, let's just have them do that. They're going to attack for three, and they'll probably get, like, all damage because of how many things are in the bag. Yep! So they lose one, but I can assign one to my hero since I have the deflector. And what the heck, one in my building. They can destroy a building, finally, if they want to. Okay, now targeted populated. If I already add a populated space with three plus units, attack twice. Oh, oh, no, they're not. They're at a populated place, but not with three plus units. Okay, otherwise, they select a populated place and sweep there. Once again, they can't. Yeah, I have no idea, man. <laughs> really not clear what I'm supposed to do here. So what the heck, let's just say that the biggest group sweeps in toward the pylons, because that's the only thing I can see that really makes sense. So they'll attack here first for three. They got two hits. So first they want to kill the building, which they replace with a sky beam. Uh, this is cool for you to see. You can blow that up. It has two hit points, but otherwise it gives the meld a plus one unit activation every turn until you blow it up. And the other damage would do one to a militia. And then they would, I guess, push in. I'm just kind of making it up, but we'll kill three of their guys while they go. Or wait, four. Wait, really? Is it four? Oh my gosh. Bye. But they are going to spawn here, I guess. And yep, that's their one option. So two more guys here. Okay, but the Armada goes and they get to warp everybody away. But hey, we have an Ion Cannon. Look, if I activate a Dreadnought, which I think one of my cards lets me, I can deal seven damage among ships in the same zone as the Dreadnought and five adjacent. Or I can distribute five damage in the same zone as the Dreadnought and then five damage with a ground strike. Which is pretty awesome, but who cares? Blip, blip. And that is it. Now, there are a few other scenarios that change up how things work and what kind of the focus is. Like, one of them has the mothership, which you never saw do anything as a main focal point of the battle. And you can also make the game easier or harder. But that was Pro Scion 3. Check out my separate review video. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.